Hi and welcome. Today we're exploring tiny homes in Brazil, New Zealand, and the United States. Thank you for joining in this journey. Please subscribe and click the notification bell to receive our latest videos and be part of the community if you haven't done so yet. Traveling to Brazil, where Incline Slab House, designed by Tetro Arquitetura, is located. This house, set on a steep slope covered with typical Brazilian savanna vegetation, is located in front of a preserved area facing mountain views. Its location strategy, longitudinal to the terrain contour lines, is defined by the extensive cover concrete slab which is fluidly inserted according to the specific needs of the program and the terrain. At first, the concrete slab appears as a light component which rests on only two pillars. It has the function of marking the main access and the garage as well as framing the panorama that walks between the spectacular view of the mountains and the limit of the densely populated area of Belo Horizonte. Further down, the slab slopes downward, connecting to the terrace where the pool and the large wooden deck are located, which defines the main spaces of the ground floor. The deck covers the whole course of the slab, shading it and hiding the inverted beams, giving lightness to the whole structure. There are no barriers or fences on the ground floor. The house is inserted into the neighborhood as a light and permeable element, counterpointing the set of fences and walls that are so regular in the surrounding. This strategy transforms the free areas around the house into ecological corridors, allowing the free circulation of wildlife on the ground. The private spaces of the house are all located below the ground floor. The living and dining room is just below the inclined segment of the roof slab, which allows abundant natural light to enter the room. On one side, large glass windows allow the view of the mountains. On the opposite side, a single steel glass gate runs through the façade, connecting the room to a large grassy plateau, the backyard, surrounded by a stone retaining wall. The living room turns into a large balcony. The stone wall, over time, becomes an ecosystem housing bees, ants, birds, and lizards. Let's visit Fielding House designed by Cheshire Architects. The house is a glazed pavilion sitting in the dunescape above a coastal golf links. The two planes of roof and main floor are joined by three timber-clad conic forms that house fireplace, bathrooms, and kitchen. A partial lower floor is reached by lift and houses guest suite, garage storage, and plant room. The glass pavilion is a familiar form in mid-century architecture and is here given some complexity as the cone breaks up the open expanse of the house. They provide enclosure amid the open pavilion and unexpected revelation of the house's spaces and the views beyond as one moves between the gently inclined walls. In a wide open landscape, the presence of the tapered form supporting the roof above slows the sitting space and induces a sense of calm repose from which to embrace the wide horizon. 
The first floor of the house contains all of the main living accommodation. On the north side, there's an open plan kitchen, dining and living space that extends to an outdoor terrace. Within this area of the floor plan, two of the timber cones conceal the kitchen and a large fireplace, providing a feeling of enclosure within the open pavilion and unexpected spatial experiences. The interiors are characterized by warm wood and light furniture and finishes. Combined with the slight curve of the tapered timber forms an expansive view of the golf links and ocean beyond. Fielding House offers inhabitants a calm and welcoming place to enjoy New Zealand's northern coastline. Meet Dragonfly House designed by Olsen Kundig. At its heart, this vacation house is about creating a place where a young family can gather away from the city to enjoy the outdoors and build a legacy of memories. Located on the Ecotone or border between a ponderosa pine forest and lake, the home is a framework for the family to experience nature. The house emphasizes the crossing point between these two ecological zones, a distinct yet subtle marker of the family's presence and legacy. The home's materiality helps it fold into the landscape. Exterior siding of reclaimed barn wood will silver as it weathers, weaving the home into the forest. The center of the home is the open plan living and dining area, which has double height guillotine window walls on either side. From afar, this transparency allows for views through the home to the lake beyond. When both window walls are open, the effect is of a single plinth floating above the forest floor. Native plantings grow up to the home's edges and a screened porch on the south end opens to a covered deck. These varying degrees of the enclosure allow the family to engage with nature during all seasons. A long-time vacation spot for the family who camped there before their home was built the home was designed to maintain a sense of natural discovery the family enjoyed when spending time on the land. The site plan is organized around a path leading through the forest and down to the lake. From the driveway, a gravel path leads across a meadow to the home's entrance, then winds around the house and down the hill to the lake. Along the way, a constellation of outdoor space including covered decks, a fire pit, and a hot pool nestled into the hillside chart a path of discovery from the house to the lake. Thanks for stopping by. Please subscribe and turn on the bell to hear about our latest videos if you haven't done so yet. Stay tuned.